Now coming to the lung volumes and capacities. This lung volumes and capacities will be discussed in two parts. The first will be static part and the second will be dynamic part. What happens, what is the meaning between static? What do you mean by static? Whenever we don't consider the time factor, it is called as static. The whenever the time factor is not taken into account, it is called as static lung volumes and capacity. Usually it is done with the help of a recording instrument, which all of us would have done in the first year practicals with the help of spirometry. This spirometry, there will be a recording which is something like this. This spirometry recording will be something like this. What will be our instruction to the subject? Our instructions to the subject will be pretty simple. For example, we will ask the subject to take a normal breathing and we will instruct them to take a deep breath. After the normal breathing, the subject has to take a deep breath. Then we will ask him to take a normal breathing and finally we will ask him to do a deep expiration. Like he has to breathe out as maximally as possible. Then again we will ask them to breathe a normal breathing. Finally, we will instruct the subject to take a deep breath followed by deep expiration. So whenever you do this procedure, this is the classical graph which we are going to get it. Here along the x axis, I have not put the time factor. Along the y axis, we have the volumes only because it is static. So coming to static, in lungs we have four volumes and four capacities. So coming to the volumes first, the normal breathing, the normal inspiration and expiration is called as the tidal volume. This volume is called as the tidal volume. The volume of air which is breathed in and out of the lung during normal breathing is called as tidal volume and its value is 500 ml. Then we ask the subject to take a deep breath. So whichever volume of air he is able to breathe above the normal inspiration is called as inspiratory reserve volume. This volume was in a reserve like we have it in a bike. Bike also we have whenever we are there is a need we put it to a reserve fuel. In a similar manner, normal respiration we don't need over this 500 ml, but I am exercising, I need extra amount of air. So whichever air I am taking above the normal breathing is called as inspiratory reserve volume. Then coming to the next procedure, we ask the subject to breathe out. So after normal expiration, the subject is able to breathe out more and more air. That is called as expiratory reserve volume. This volume is called as expiratory reserve volume. These are the three volumes which can be measured by the classical spirometry. And there is one more volume which always stays in the lung. It is not taken outside the lung. That volume is called as the residual volume which stays in the lung even after forceful expiration. Suppose for example, I ask you to breathe as fast as possible, as maximal as possible. Breathe out. You will do it. But still some air is always left in the lung which is called as the residual volume. Why this residual volume should be there? Now let's try to get that concept also. Before that we will see the other volumes value, inspiratory reserve volume. It is the extra amount of air that can be breathed in above the normal inspiration. Its normal value is 2000 ml. These values are taken from the recent edition of Gena. So try to follow this only. Then expiratory reserve volume, the amount of air that can be breathed above the normal expiration which is 1000 ml. And there is some residual volume, the amount of air which is present inside the lung even after forceful expiration. This is the volume which cannot be measured by a spirometer. So that is one MCQ. And what is the reason for this residual volume? Already we saw whenever the alveoli goes for a complete collapse, it is very difficult to put air inside it or rebreathe and open the alveoli. This happens during the birth of the child and I told you during the birth of the child, it has to cry out to open its alveoli. But in an adult, will it be nice to cry out and open the alveoli every time? It is absolutely a, it will be a funny thing and our entire life will go on opening this alveoli only. That's why some amount of air is always present in the alveoli which is contributing to this residual volume. This helps to prevent the collapse of the alveoli. And this value is 1300 ml. This prevents the collapse. But how is this residual volume coming into play? Let's try to understand. There is a concept called as dynamic compression of airways. There is a concept called as dynamic compression of smaller airways. Smaller airways. So what happens here? So whenever we try to breathe out, first thing is an alveoli is like this. And it has a 
alveolar duct like this. So whenever we try to breathe out, it is collapsing. This is also entering and exiting. You tell me now this will collapse first or the alveolar duct will collapse first. Obviously, the caliber of the alveolar air is alveolar duct is smaller than the alveolar sac. So it is going to collapse. So whenever this collapses, what is going to happen? This is going to collapse and there will be some amount of air which is left inside this alveoli itself. This will help to prevent the complete collapse so that the residual volume is maintained always. So these are the four volumes. Now coming to the capacities of the lung. Capacities are pretty simple. We add up some of the volumes, it gives us the capacities. So coming to the first capacity, which is called as the inspiratory capacity. Inspiratory capacity is pretty simple. So whatever air I am able to inspire, it is called inspiratory capacity. It will include both the inspiratory reserve volume as well as the tidal volume. So what is the normal value? The normal value is 2500 ml. Now coming to the functional residual capacity. What is this functional residual capacity? We saw something called as residual volume, but functional residual capacity is there. During normal breathing, after expiration, whatever air remains inside the lung is called as the functional residual capacity. Functionally, this is in the residual state. It is not taken outside the lung. That's why it is called functional residual capacity. This is calculated by adding up the ERV and the residual volume. The value will be 2300 ml. Then there is a third capacity which is called as the vital capacity. What do you understand by the term vital? Vital means very, very essential. So the maximum amount of air that can be exchanged with the external environment during an emergency is called as the vital capacity. So this vital capacity will be an addition of inspiratory reserve volume, tidal volume, then expiratory reserve volume. And the total value is 3500 ml. And total lung capacity, whenever I add up all the volumes, it gives me the total lung capacity. It can also be said that vital capacity plus residual volume. And the total value will be 4800 ml. So these are our lung volumes and capacity static.